In this video, I'm going to show some of the great new features we've added in Chief Architect X11. A reference display allows you to superimpose another floor over your current floor. This has typically been the floor above or below. You can now display multiple reference floors that might include both the floor above and below. In the new reference display interface, you can set the floor, the layer set, choose the layers, include details like fill, and control the draw order. By using saved plan views, you can set up different configurations depending on your needs. In our previous version of Chief Architect, we implemented saved plan views, allowing you to open multiple views simultaneously, such as the floor plan and framing plan. These plan views retain the layer and annotation sets, active defaults, scale, zoom, floor, and reference information. If you are working on an older plan, you can now import saved plan views into those existing projects with X11. For new or legacy plans, you can create a saved plan view from a view previously sent to layout. You can also unlink saved plan views in layouts. We have changed the behavior of the Auto Interior Dimension tool to provide a cleaner look. The tool has moved from the toolbar to the lower Edit menu when the room is selected. The tool will then place your interior dimensions. For more control, you can choose what dimensions will be located, found in Dimension Defaults. For objects such as cabinets with dynamic default values, we have replaced the designator of D with a default icon that can be toggled on or off to make it easy to set default values. There is a new Find and Replace Text tool that you can search the plan so you can easily locate your text. With rich text, we enabled the standard hotkeys for Control or Command B for bold, Control U for underline, and Control I for italic text. In the Preferences, you will find File Type Association to assign file types to this latest version of Chief Architect. It includes file types for plans, layouts, and library files. If you are using a PDF file reference in your plan or layout, it will refresh automatically when the PDF has been externally updated. You can now toggle your crosshair cursor on and off with a hotkey, or by adding the toggle button to your toolbar. The room dialog has been updated to include a story poll preview with dimensions. As you move your mouse over the input fields, they will highlight the corresponding element in the preview. As you make edits, the story poll dynamically updates. To select like objects, you could enable a specific tool from the toolbar, say the base cabinet, and press the shift key while drawing a marquee with your mouse. We have now exposed that selection process with a new Marquee Select Edit tool. Once you have an item selected, say a wall cabinet, using the Marquee Select tool in the Edit toolbar, you can select multiple items of the same type. The process works on dissimilar objects as well. If you select both a wall and base cabinet, you can select other like objects using the Marquee Select tool. The platform dialog has been updated to be similar to wall types. As you modify ceiling, floor, or roof structures, the components can be moved up and down in the assembly. When editing a polyline, we created a new tool, Simplify Polyline, to remove redundant points along a polyline's edge. A new Line Styles Manager is available to manage the line styles. You can change the listed order, add, copy, and delete line styles, and see where a style is used with the new tool tip. You can control moldings on a per-wall basis. 
On the general panel for the wall, check the option No Room Moldings to remove it. There is an added RGB tooltip that will display the RGB values for colors as you hover over the interface with your cursor. AutoCAD DXF or DWG files with multi-liter styles will import into Chief Architect, and you can continue to edit these objects after importing them. For terrain elevation points, you can specify text macros to display dynamic information for landscape or site plans. When you place a marker on a cross-section or elevation view, you can display the actual height for that marker by using one of the text macros. When exporting a Chief Architect model to the 3D viewer, you can update existing 3D viewer files without creating multiple versions of the same model. In the last version of Chief Architect, we added a location setting for system libraries core, bonus, and manufacture to be stored on a network or the cloud. In X11, we extended the same ability for user libraries to be stored on a network or cloud account. As you import new library catalogs, they will automatically be highlighted and selected in the library browser for easier identification. When you add an item to the library, like a cabinet, you can use the Add to Library As allowing you to choose which individual components, the main object, hardware, fixtures, millwork, and materials to store in the library. And you can now open and edit properties of objects you add to the library, such as this cabinet and other parametric objects. When importing a new texture image for a material, a copy of the referenced file will be automatically stored in your user data folder so if you delete or move the image, a copy will remain in your chief library. Our fill patterns have new sizing controls for both horizontal and vertical offsets. And patterns and fill styles are now integrated into the library. As you browse to this new folder, you can now apply these fills by clicking to enable the new Fill Style Painter. The Fill Style Painter has the scoping tools to help target how you apply fills to CAD objects. As you edit individual objects, such as a backsplash, you can browse to the library and apply the patterns from the new catalog. You can convert and save your favorite patterns to the library, and they will retain edit properties like color, scale, and orientation. Give them a custom name and use them for future projects. When importing an image for a material, such as a tile, a new Pattern from Texture is available to generate pattern vector lines to better match 2D patterns for custom tiles and other unique material surfaces. The new tool includes simple and advanced thresholds to create the pattern. We have made it easier to keep materials in sync between render and vector views with the new Synchronize Pattern and Texture Offsets setting. As you make changes to one, it is extended to the other. And you can define the material list calculation that is separate from the pattern display. It might be you are using a tile pattern but want an area calculation for square footage. Plan materials now display a full preview of materials with normal and bump maps. And in the Material Defaults dialog, you can multiple select items to make group edits. With the Convert Selected Items to Symbol tool, you can convert one or more 3D objects to a symbol and store it in the library. Also, for symbol editing, we have added a visual stretch plane and bounding box. This interactive display makes it easy to define an object's behavior for resizing. For ray trace rendering, there are controls to pause and resume a ray trace. You can also choose to queue multiple ray trace renderings. A new rope lighting tool is available to create linear light paths, such as under cabinet LED strip lights. 
With rope lights, you can specify light location, spacing, size, and light intensity. Any polyline can be converted into a rope light object. If you are using a distributed path or distributed region, you can assign light objects for control of spacing, repeated lighting, and light intensity. Electrical connection arcs, line style, and snapping perform in a more natural way, minimizing the need for additional editing. Also, 3D electrical objects can have 2D plan view fill colors, such as this wet rated recessed light. 3D walkthroughs now have default settings you can specify frames per second, compression, and resolution. Resolution is no longer tied to your active window size, making it easy to record videos its standard sizes, such as 1920 by 1080. New video codecs are available in Chief Architect X11 and are accessible in the walkthrough options via the Record dialog. A new glass wall is available for showers or other rooms. You will find both a full wall and a pony wall. Glass walls are marked as a partition wall in the Wall Type dialog. The partition attribute will stop the wall's construction at the finish surface instead of cutting through to the main structural layer, ideal for glass-style walls. To complement the glass wall, there is a new shower door tool, a quick way to place a glass slab-style door. Default settings are available for pony walls and glass walls. You can specify all your typical settings for these walls. An invisible wall toggle tool was added to the Edit toolbar so you can quickly toggle a wall as visible or invisible. A new wall schedule is available which can be used to generate a wall legend. You can easily include or exclude walls and use the other typical schedule features. A new Find Wall tool is available in the Wall Schedule. It will identify the location of those walls in plan view. And from a truss detail view, there is a find tool that will identify the location of the truss in plan view. For added control of roof gutters, you can now specify gutters on a per roof edge and control gutter materials. For floor defaults, you can access any floor from the edit defaults dialog regardless of your active or current floor level. A new Keynote tool and schedule has been added in Chief Architect X11. When placing a note, you can enter the text, type of note, label information, and the shape to use. As you place new notes, they automatically will increment when you place a note schedule since they leverage text macros. You can use the Note Type Management tool to create and modify your note types. When you place a note schedule, you can choose the type of notes to include, as well as other typical schedule options. A new default is available for notes to define your preferred settings. Note defaults can be controlled through the active default settings or an annotation set. There is a new parametric barn door. With this tool, you can define a surface mounted door, side and top overhangs, wall offset, and the typical hardware used for barn doors. Pocket, sliding, and barn doors can display partially open in plan or 3D views. You can use the edit handles to manually adjust the opening or set a percentage in the doors dialog. A new fixed door type is available to create non-operable doors, like side lights for entryways. Door hinges and hardware are not included by default, but faux hardware can be turned on. For bifold, pocket, and sliding doors, you can specify multiple panels. For sliding doors, this allows you to create retractable walls 
or stackers such as those offered by NanoWall. In the Doors Configuration options, you can list the number of panels for the left or right side. Soffits have a new option to follow the slope of custom ceiling planes. Just use the Sloped setting and the Place Under Ceiling option. Creating a half wall with a railing on top for stairs is now easier. Using a pony wall with a railing on top can be set to follow stairs to create these styles of stair walls. You can create more complicated stair shapes and paths using the landing tool. Stair landings recognize and will connect to other landings to form individual stair components. The wood grain or planking will follow the direction of the largest nosing tread. The molding panel has been updated for objects that contain moldings. You can manage moldings, see a preview of their location in rooms, define offsets, and save directly to the library. We hope you enjoy using the new version and find the program's new features improve your design experience and productivity.